My name is Katerina Rubithi. I am uh, an agronomist from Greece. I work in agriculture, agricultural University of Athens in plant breeding laboratory. And one of my main interests uh, is uh, organic farming regarding all kind in all kinds of crops. Organic farming is an agricultural system that uh, relies on ecosystem, ecosystem management, basically. Uh, actually, it takes into consideration, consideration potential environmental and social impacts by prohibiting or uh, strictly, strictly limiting uh, the use of uh, uh, synthetic some substances, substances such as uh, fertilizers, uh, pesticides, GMOs, uh, growth hormones, preservatives, etc. Uh, in this way, uh, in, uh, an organic farming system enhances uh, uh, ecosystem biodiversity. Uh, it, it, enhances, it minimizes the health risks for the consumer and the farmer because uh, if uh, we eliminate uh, uh, the use uh, of uh, chemical substances that means that uh, by concentration of contaminants into the food chain is minimized also. So uh, uh, this means healthier products for the consumer. Okay, and how can I recognize uh, a product that is uh, the result of uh, biological organic farming compared to a conventional one? Uh, first of all, organic products are uh, labeled and certified. So when a, a consumer chooses to, uh, to buy a certified labeled product, organic product from the supermarket, he knows uh, uh, where his food is produced, how it is processed, uh, how it is handled and marketed. Other than that, uh, an organic uh, product uh, may be found in the market not labeled. Of course, uh, this is against the national regulations about uh, organic products and their marketing. But uh, I would like to share some uh, knowledge with uh, consumers about how to recognize organic products uh, by experience. So let's say that uh, uh, what is the difference between an organic fruit and a, and a GMO fruit? An organic fruit uh, always uh, it's smaller in size than a GMO because GMOs are uh, uh, are made to be uh, all uniform, perfect, big in uh, size. So first of all, an organic fruit must be a small fruit. Then uh, the consumer must keep in mind that uh, an organic fruit uh, must show some kind of uh, symptoms on it from uh, insect attacks, for example, because that means that the producer uh, didn't use uh, very uh, didn't use synthetic uh, pesticides in his crop. Uh, so uh, organic fruits are not perfect. Of course, uh, this is not uh, the rule, and in any circumstance, I do not recommend uh, uh, that uh, consumers should follow this this tactic. It's about informing consumers because uh, they also need to be educated on organics. Uh, so, in conclusion, for me, organic product 100% is a product which is labeled and certified. Okay. And if a farm would like to convert the production to, to organic, what uh, are the aspects that uh, the farm should uh, take care of? A farmer that uh, aims to convert uh, his, to pr his production into organic should take into consideration a number of uh, facts. First of all, he has to keep in mind, in mind that an organic farm shows uh, lower productivity 
and uh, so the farmer should expect uh, a, a, decreased, uh, a decrease in his uh, yield. Uh, that doesn't mean necessarily that uh, he will earn less money because organic products uh, hit, uh, uh, hit prices, better prices than conventional. But he has to keep in mind that his crop will not be uh, such productive as it was as a conventional. Uh, then he has to be educated before he moves to this change because uh, uh, he, organic farming requires the use of organic uh, pesticides, for example, and example and uh, organic pesticides do not. Uh, uh, act only precautionarily. Uh, that means that maybe if he doesn't apply them in the right time, maybe he, uh, he will face the risk of losing his whole production. So he has to be very informed, very well educated about the uh, time of applying each organic substance and uh, he has to uh, uh, understand that he faces higher risks. Another important issue is uh, uh, the candidate uh, organic producer must um, uh, must uh, uh, he, he can't be the only one organic producer in the area because in this way he will never be organic. I mean that uh, uh, one farm chooses to be organic and then the neighboring uh, farms are conventional and they use uh, synthetic uh, substances such as fertilizers and the pesticides. Uh, these uh, contaminants will uh, be transferred uh, by groundwater or even by the wind to his organic farm. So uh, maybe his conversion will be delayed and uh, even uh, when it will be occurred, uh, he, can't, uh, he will never uh, achieve the goal of preserving the local biodiversity because uh, there is no point uh, of one not to use uh, uh, dangerous, uh, contaminant, uh, dangerous contaminants. This is something that uh, should be uh, it, it should be a collective action from the, from the whole area and from farmers in a, from all the farmers in, a, in an area. Uh, so a farmer which uh, wishes to convert his farm into organic uh, should find more farmers in his area to do that together in, in order for this system to be truly sustainable. Okay, and uh, what are the main requirements that the company must conduct in order to be certified in organic uh, uh, as okay. if, uh, if an agribusiness wants uh, to, to be converted into an organic uh, agribusiness, uh, that first of all he must contact an, uh, a specific organization which certif certificates uh, organic products and uh, from that point uh, this, this organization will cooperate with the producer uh, in the, all the way. I mean uh, by sending uh, experts, agronomists, uh, by controlling, uh, taking samples from the ground, uh, from the plants, uh, it's not something that uh, it can be done easy. It usually takes some years because uh, uh, only uh, only uh, farms that uh, that they are not used for a long time. Only these are truly organic. So uh, a farm, uh, in order to be organic, uh, then. Uh, Contaminants uh, have to uh, have to escape the soil, for example. The groundwater must be uh, with 
without contaminants also. So um, uh, this farm should um, should always uh, cooperate with the experts. Uh, they will control the farm and they will decide how many years it's going to take for this farm to actually produce organic products and then it will be labeled. For example, in olive, a uh, conversion like this lasts about three years. Okay. So could you explain what is the practice that the company must fulfill and what are the commitments that it is um, that it assumes when it is uh, certified? Uh, uh, the, the basic commitment uh, uh, of, of the company who certifies or of the... Or what is the basic uh, commitment that the company, the um, agri-business okay, okay. uh, should... Uh, okay. okay um, the, this agribusiness, first of all, for me, it has it, it, it has to have consciousness because uh, this uh, this uh, thing deals with uh, health issues. So, uh, first of all, uh, you must keep in mind that it's uh, this is a difficult task task because uh, the easy way is uh, to have a conventional farm and uh, when you have a problem from uh, a pest or a disease you can anytime uh, use uh, a synthetic substance and deal with it but then uh, the organic farmer is obligated not to use these substances or uh, use them in a very limited uh, way so, uh, he has to find all the possible ways uh, to manage uh, plant uh, diseases, problems or uh, attacks from insects by using only organic substances which can be found in nature. There are uh, many products, organic products, that help uh, the producer deal with the problem with these problems, but uh, he ha he has to uh, keep in mind that uh, the time that he applies them it's very important, and he also has to keep in mind that he's uh, he must be very responsible because people who choose to buy organics uh, they do it uh, mainly for health issues. So he has to be sensitive about uh, his commi commitments and about the subject. Okay. Uh, are there any aspects related with organic uh, farming related to sustainability that have not been very well um, taken into account until now? Yes. Have been considered yes. Uh, I already referred to that subject because uh, I very interested in it. Uh, what I told you of, uh, in the first question uh, that uh, it's this is an action, this is a system that uh, uh, it must be applied collectively. It is very important because uh, otherwise you just have a label. Uh, so uh, it's not only maybe farming should change its character in general and besides thinking our own our own farms start acting collectively in in lo locally i mean so this way we will have the best results and systems like this which are considered to be the best would be truly effective. Okay. Uh, is it possible for a farm to have to produce several products, some of them with organic way and some of them with conventional way? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, it's about what, which product, which farm it is certified. For example, um, uh, I have a friend that. Uh, uh, has uh, some olive groves which are certified as um, organic 
uh, because uh, he is uh, near to an organic olive mill, but then he has some farms which are not close to an organic olive mill, so he didn't convert those farms. It's uh, but uh, different products because these products are different are given way in the market in a different way. So. Uh... Uh, now we can have some questions related with the training uh, needs mm -hmm. of uh, uh, in the olive oil sector that would be useful for the development of the training material. So what do you think are the main training needs for the producers uh, related with olive oil, uh, organic olive oil? It's uh, related with uh, certification, marketing, promotion, harvesting? Uh, the the main problem that producers have to deal with is, uh, I see two main problems. The one is that they are not trained enough. They are used to, to use uh, synthetics, synthetic pesticides, and solve their problem. But uh, organic farming, uh, there is it's a whole other view. So first of all, they must be trained. They must be trained by giving them examples of uh, specific uh, uh, agricultural, organic agricultural, agricultural systems. Uh, for example, um, systems like this can be developed about olive uh, groves. Uh, you can pro the producer, uh, you can inform him about uh, how, uh, when he will apply his organic pesticide, when he, when he will apply uh, the, the hormones, the organic hormones uh, uh, for uh, uh, his fruit set. Uh, producers don't know this stuff because they are not agronomists, so they will have to be educated. And, uh, and then the other thing uh, does not have to do with training, it has to do with facilities. Because uh, a very big problem is uh, that uh, uh, con converting an organic, uh, a conventional farm into organic uh, supposes that uh, in the area there is an organic olive meal in the case of olive oil so it is uh, 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 the state has to interfere in these uh, subjects because uh, uh, producers need help do you think that the target group for training will be also the people that manage the olive meals you know if they are able if they yes, like yes, to of convert course. the olive meal to yes. the of course, of course, because there is a huge amount of uh, uh, of uh, managers of uh, olive mills. There are a lot of conventional olive mills, and then there are few organic olive mills. So, if they understand, uh, if they are trained uh, into market issues, packaging issues, and things like that, maybe they will uh, change uh, their mind and convert their meals into organics in a way that there will be a balance between, at least between conventional and organic. Okay, because if you produce the olive in a conventional way and then the olive meal is not, is not, is not uh, organic, yes. then the yeah. final product is not organic. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what type of courses can be useful, you think, to improve knowledge and skills of uh, human resources? Uh, agri... agri courses, mainly. Marketing courses. So, producers uh, are really informed, they know what they're doing, you know, because uh, at, uh, at this point, producers don't really know what they're doing. Uh, they have to be informed uh, in detail 
about uh, their crop in specific, about uh, how they will manage to get the, the higher quality of their products and uh, the higher uh, yield also. And uh, then uh, marketing courses will be very useful for them because a very big problem in Greece is uh, that we don't know, producers don't know how to sell their products. So a uh, very few businessmen all over the country control uh, agricultural production. If this knowledge, uh, uh, if producers acquire this knowledge, then uh, it, uh, money uh, from uh, agribusiness can be distributed in them in never in a more balanced way, more fair way. It, it, what, can, what format of course do you think more um, relevant to seminars, online courses, big lectures? And how long? Yes, I think uh, uh, online courses or seminars should uh, will work very good. But uh, for me, this depends on uh, uh, on the target group uh, you aim to train. Meaning that if you want to train producers that are over 40 years old, then an online online course may be difficult for them to keep up with. So a seminar would be a bit, maybe a better solution for them. Uh, on the other hand, an on online course could, uh, could enhance them, you know, to keep up uh, with, um, with technology. And uh, from this uh, they can also relate to marketing issues uh, and maybe it would uh, train them from the, for the best. And then, oh, over uh, under 40 years old, uh, I believe uh, online courses should uh, um, fit uh, very good on the needs of the target groups. Okay. The next question is related to the courses for the improvement of the competitiveness of the companies, but you have already applied about the marketing. Yes. You have some part in this? No, no, it's, uh, they have to know about marketing strategies. Okay, and uh, in one agribusiness, what kind of professional profiles and uh, people with good skills and knowledge should be involved in order for this agribusiness to be competitive in the market? Of, of, yes, of course, uh, uh, there must be an agronomist in this uh, in this other business, in my opinion, in order for the product to achieve its best quality. And this is very important because uh, if you have a quality, a, a high quality product, then this is easier to sell because uh, it speaks from itself. Then you you will have uh, to have you you will have to. A manager should be involved who knows about marketing and economics also and he will be the one to um, to set up uh, kiosks uh, for example uh, uh, this is the main way that uh, local products are being advertised uh, worldwide by taking part into exhibitions worldwide uh, its producer with his kiosks and this way he introduces his product uh, to to, uh, to foreign people in order in order to achieve some exports so um, a producer can do all things uh, for me he oh, he must uh, cooperate with an agronomist and a manager uh, specialist in economics or marketing Okay, and uh, finally, uh, the last question. And what, in Greece, which are the elements that foster the success of a company in the non sector? The people, the ground, the, the region? It's, uh, for me, it's the quality of the marketing. So, uh, you, you 
make sure that your product is uh, of high quality and then to make sure that can, your people will learn about your product, they will hear of it. And then uh, uh, about uh, olive oil especially, uh, there in the market there is a trend that uh, uh, it is very important uh, the region which the product comes from. So, uh, labeling uh, your uh, uh, product not only as organic but uh, geographically labeling is uh, another uh, thing, uh, thing that will enhance uh, its advertisement. Okay, thank you very much. Your comments were very useful and valuable. Thank you.